Hello and welcome to this Glueware webinar for the month of September here in 2020. Today's webinar is titled Automating EVPN VXLAN with Glueware. The session is being recorded for an on-demand posting, so a live Q&A will not be available. However, if you have questions, please send them to sales at glueware.com. Presenting today is myself, Michael Howe, VP of Product Marketing, along with Olivier Hoon Van, our Chief Science Officer and Co-Founder. Olivier will be running you through the live demo towards uh, the second half of the session. The agenda for today's session is really split into two parts. I'll be covering the introduction of EVPN as well as standards-based version as well as uh, talking about a Juniper-specific version uh, as well as talking about the Glueware solution. How do we package it and how is it built into the Glueware network automation solution and our config modeling application. Olivier will be taking over and running through the challenges of automating EVPN, describing the Glueware EVPN data model in a lot of detail, and then getting into some examples in the, in the user interface, including standards-based EVPN and then a customer-specific use case. So to provide a brief overview or introduce EVPN VXLAN, it's important to discuss what is the problem we're trying to solve, what are we trying to address with new sets of protocols. Well, there's several problems that network engineers have been working on for years, and they're primarily centered around scale and stability. So traditionally, we've been addressing these using layer two protocols, including the addition of virtual LANs or VLANs that give you over 4,000 logical LANs, and spanning tree, you know, usually per VLAN spanning tree, but it's inefficient and chatty, and there's too many broadcast events, and ultimately there it can cause instability in the network uh, when those things occur. And that can occur even when making common changes like adding a VLAN. The third key issue is that applications are changing and now don't always reside in the same data center for all, for all the other applications they need to connect to. So many applications these days make API calls to other applications. And applications are now residing in virtual machines and in containers and external networks like clouds, other data centers. They could even reside in the campus locations or even branch locations. So the modern data center or the data center needs to modernize, I should say, to really be flexible to support newer application design, yet still support legacy applications that require being on the, the same layer two domain so they can broadcast out and find uh, connectivity to other things they're talking to. So VXLAN is a data plane encapsulation often kind of referred to as MAC and IP that has emerged to carry layer two MAC based traffic over layer three IP based traffic. So this is referred to as an overlay because it provides sort of a tunneling capability to tunnel layer two over layer three. It is highly scalable with over 16 million addresses, and that solves a big piece of the problem when you look at what uh, data center energy, uh, engineers are trying to do to modernize. EVPN has come about, which is leveraging BGP, or more specifically multi-protocol BGP, for Ethernet VPNs, which adds the ability to use BGP as the control plane to carry layer two address information and BGP has proven to be scalable and reliable, and with multi-protocol extensions, it's already serving its purpose for, for many other solutions in the networking industry. So while EVPN does support other transports, like for example, MPLS, that is currently out of scope for this session since Glueware is focused on enterprise use cases, not service provider use cases. And that part of it, or part of the specification is not implemented by Glueware uh, to date, however, we are highly flexible and certainly could add it if our customers uh, do demand that. So kind of in summary, EVPN with VXLAN or EVPN itself provides a highly scalable IP fabric and is using an IP routed underlay. And then it's leveraging VXLAN as the layer two overlay. So you're kind of getting a best of both worlds. This is a little simplified because you do have numerous other layers of complexity with multicast and, and other pieces of the design and a lot of options in your design, but it does provide a lot of flexibility to address a lot of use cases and therefore has become quite popular. 
So what does Glueware do for eVPN VXLAN? In short, we provide very flexible, intelligent automation. So eVPN VXLAN can be manually configured via the CLI. This is often referred to as a controllerless implementation since many vendors who support eVPN offer some type of software controller to implement the configuration and the changes. The issues cust uh, our customers have raised to us about the vendor solutions as well as other third-party solutions that are out there is that most implementations are very rigid, meaning they have hard-coded or predetermined some design, and so you have to do it their way. For example, they determine what un uh, underlay protocol you must use, like you must use BGP instead of OSPF, or, or they hard code the addressing scheme and you have to use you know this addressing. And that, that runs into design limitations, especially if maybe you already have some part of your network implemented. The other big downfall is many solutions out there are green field only. This means that the, the so-called controller must deploy the fabric and then ultimately must be used to make every change to the fabric. And the reason for this is that, you know, EVPN VXLAN, while a lot of the protocols are known to network engineers, you know, at this point people know BGP, they know multicast, they know VXLAN, you know, they know these pieces, but when you get to con configuring it and they all have to interwork seamlessly, it actually gets very complicated very quickly and you have to be extremely... Uh, you know, detail-oriented to get everything correct. So, you know, with those limitations there about the vendor solutions being rigid and, and greenfield only, if you do it manually, then there's a lot of pressure on the network engineer to not make mistakes. And if you get a, if you make a mistake, it, you know, could be, uh, it could be pretty bad if you, you know, take down a spine or, or other things. Now, there are protocols in place for redundancy and resiliency, but still, you don't want a manual change to take down part of your fabric. So there are also approaches using scripts, but similarly, scripts are often good at essentially pushing configs you've predetermined. And the problem lies there again in that, you know, you're, you know, in traditional configuration, you're predetermining configuration statements and the variables maybe are coming from a single place or can be you know, predicted in a more, uh, you know, so let's say seamless or easy manner. The problem is that when you're configuring, let's say, a new leaf, you need re you need to know how the uh, the spines that you're connecting to are configured. So it's data you need to go and collect or already have in a data model, and that is quite problematic for most implementations or trying to automate, you know, uh, eVPN with scripting. So Glueware automates what we say really any deployment model, but basically because our, our uh, implementation is extremely flexible, we support what is, you know, industry kind of calls leaf level routing or, or edge routing, edge routed, where the uh, translation from the tunnel of layer two to layer three is happening on, on the leaf level. We also support uh, Juniper's centrally routed bridging method which has uh, had some you know, popularity in several of the, several of the accounts that we're work, uh, working with or, and talking to. So kind of the summary out of this slide is that Glueware, through the use of a EVPN domain data model, we're able to ha maintain a data model and a source of truth to handle a lot of the complexities required for your underlay, your overlay, your tenant VLAN, your tenant VRF, and we can handle the addition of a VLAN or the addition of a, a leaf node or spine node and dynamically collect all the variables and data needed to do that provisioning seamlessly. So to dive a little further into the Glueware solution, Glueware provides an eVPN VXLAN reference design package for our config modeling application. And so just a, a, a very quick recap is that, you know, Glueware is an automation and orchestration platform. We have kind of you know, built on purpose-built uh, intent-based applications that reside on top of it. So our, you know, things like our device manager performs inventory, 
We have our Drift and Audit application that enables you to see config changes and run audits on your network. And uh, we have the OS Manager um, solution to automate operating system upgrades. Our config modeling technology and application is our approach to configuration management. It is built for both brownfield and greenfield. It allows you to bring your own design, bring your own configuration, bring your own specification, and have Glueware automate it using an underlying declarative engine to intelligently understand how the network is currently configured, compare it to the model uh, or you know, configuration that you're specifying, and then make only the changes that are required. And if there are configurations that are out of policy, the Glueware engine will automatically remove those. So while there's exceptions to that and there's rules and things you can do, generally that uh, intelligence and the declarative nature of Glueware is incredibly important to those who are adopting it. And all of those complement EVPN very, very strongly. So just at a high level with Glueware, it's extremely rapid to onboard your devices as well as your own configurations and your own designs. And we'll get into EVPN a bit further and you'll see it in the demo. Glueware is a, a platform that does not require programming. So we're not going to require you to learn Python or some other, you know, markup language or, or you know, build individual script-based, you know, run books or playbooks or anything like that. So no programming is required. It's really about understanding the CLI or uh, that you're, you're working with and understanding the network protocols and how you intend to use them. I already talked about how the fact that Glueware is intent-based you declare or you state the intended state and Glueware will implement that and ensure you result you are ultimately in that intended state. And you can also up level or abstract within Glueware to higher level um, abstractions or business level if, if that is something you're looking to do. And I did already mention that we're optimized for brownfield, meaning Glueware can automate a network that's already been deployed. Right? And this is a key differentiation when you're thinking about, you know, how do I automate? And, and me and the customers, uh, Olivier is going to talk to a specific customer who already had an EVPN VXLAN fabric deployed and only wanted specific things automated and were hitting the, the pain. So it's kind of like once you feel the pain and you're ready to bring automation in, Glueware can fit. So specifically for EVPN, we have built a reference design package, which is essentially underlying it's a uh, it's glueware data modeling technology that enables you to define exactly how you are implementing evpn and vxlan in your network so you can define the parameters of your spine nodes and define parameters of your leaf nodes you have full control of your underlay and overlay you can select the protocols you want to use your numbering schemes your route reflectors for your uh, uh, if you're using BGP and you, as your underlay. Um, Glueware has full integrated IP address management and intelligent assignment. So what that means is like when you're setting your loopbacks and uh, you're setting your default gateways and other IP information, Glueware can intelligently use those assignments into the model. So you're not having to manage things one by one or device by device. You essentially leverage the model to define your reservations and your plan and your pools, and Glueware will intelligently leverage that to assign those when provisioning uh, or, or even synchronizing your network. And you're going to see a lot of that in Olivier's demo. So Anycast gateway for Mac, Anycast, uh, we didn't get into it much, but essentially Anycast um, you know, really makes an efficient network by using multicast to um, to distribute um, broadcasted um, traffic. Um, when you when you think about uh, VXLAN, it, it supports broadcast, unicast, and multicast. And when you have unknown Max or you have uh, unknown unicast, you know, in layer two you broadcast. Well, Anycast has the ability to efficiently carry that across the network. And then, of course, uh, when you get into the tenant settings, you have full control of your tenant settings for your VTAP domains. That's the virtual tunnel endpoints. So you're assigning 
uh, all of that information. You have full capability to define the virtual routing and forwarding instances and the tenant VLANs and Glueware can, you know, not only you know, set that information to the, your schema, but also intelligently synchronize the fabric when you're making changes. And I think that's a key highlight you're going to see in Olivier's demo. So with that, I'd like to uh, conclude my segment and turn it over to Olivier to take you through the Glueware implementation as well as a very specific customer use case we recently worked on that has become a great success story for us. So with that, I will turn it over to Olivier. We're going to show you how Glueware can help you deploy a CRV eVPN design. In a traditional eVPN VXLAN design, the configuration complexity is mostly on the leaf nodes. The spines are only there to perform the MPVGP routing, but all the complexity, the encapsulation, the ORB interfaces, the SVR interfaces, all that complexity is literally on the leaf node. So when moving to a CRV design, then some of the complexity explained earlier um, on, on, from the configuration standpoint on the leaf node is now moving to the spine. So in a CRV design, the leaf nodes will only perform layer two functions and the, 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 all the other functions, layer three and maybe more, are moving to the spine nodes now. So the complexity of the configuration is now everywhere on the EVP and VXLAN fabric. You have leaf nodes with a complex configuration. You've got now spine node with a complex configuration. And even if you're templating the configuration, you know exactly what are the lines that needs to be deployed. You're going you're gonna to have to cookie cut this um, VLAN, you know, VRF, all that template and spread this across all the fabric. And the difficulty of configuring this, 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 the, the template configuration is that it's not just about knowing all the configuration details for the node that you're configuring. The template configuration is full of configuration details that are all around the fabric. If you're a leaf node, then you need to know all the details about the other leaf nodes within your VTEP. If you're a spine, then now that you are rounding centrally, now you need, you need to be aware of all the VLANs, all the ORB interfaces, and all that makes the configuration very, very difficult to maintain. So what we, we've done in Glueware, we're using our application config modeling that allow you to you know, maintain those templates. And we have created a construct that is specifically there to hold the fabric uh, details, all the fabric details. All the details include everything that Glueware needs to understand about the underlay, about the overlay, about you know, all the VTEPs, about how to number all the interfaces, maybe numbering, you know, the spines to leaf subnets. It can also be, you know, MP BGP details, and it could be, I want to use OSPF and not IBGP for my underlay routing. This fabric, all the fabric details are literally in that construct. So let me just create one now. I have one populated, but I want to show you the way you start from scratch. Um, so here, for instance, you know, you can specify whether you're entertaining deploying a, you know, leaf level routing, like a traditional eVPN, you know, VXLAN, or if you want to do a spine level routing, which is precisely, you know, um, you know, Juniper CRB um, eVPN VXLAN, right? And depending on the choice you're making, then, um, you know, the, the, the forms and the data that you're going to put, um, that you're going to enter in this data model will be, will be different, of course. Now, this is important to understand that we're not forcing you to deploy everything from scratch. This data model can work as well 
on a greenfield environment where you're starting from scratch, you're deploying EVP at Bingsland, you know, this is your very, very first deployment, or that you have an existing design. And we'll, we'll see this later um, where we help the customer, you know, only focusing on, on, the, on the problem that they had and they were not obliged to just deploy everything uh, from scratch. So this data model includes, um, you know, all the VTEPs and all the VTEPs, you know, underlying information, overlay, all the VLANs, all the VRFs that needs to be deployed per VTEP. You know, you have global routing details, you know, for your MPVGP, you might, you know, deploy multicast over the fabric um, and, on, and other, other, other details. Um, and depending on how you choose, whether you're choosing leaf uh, level routing or spine level routing, then, you know, the, 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 the choices or, or um, you know, the, the form that you have to fill in is, is, is different. Now, let me get rid of this uh, empty, empty instance and let's, let's, look at, let's, let's look at this one. So in this one, you know, I'm showing you that I have, you know, two um, VTEPs, VTEP1 and VTEP3. And literally I have here, I am specifying how I would like my underlay to be configured. So, so that includes, you know, the, you know, the, the, the routing protocol that I want to use, you know, I have the choice of, you know, um, BGP or SPF, um, and, and how I would like Blueware to help numbering all the leaf nodes um, that are connected to the spine nodes. The goal is that you would want to deploy a leaf node very easily where you're going to say, okay, I want to deploy my leaf node and Blueware is going to figure out, okay, what is the slash, the next slash 31 that's going to be available and make sure that for instance, it's going to assign the first address to the spine and the second address you know, to the, um, to the leaf node. And you want Bluewire to do this automatically for you. And remember, the success of configuring um, EVPN correctly is that you have access to all the data about the fabric. So the fact that the engine, the Bluewire engine is going to deploy, help you deploy this underlay, automatically every node that Blueware is going to deploy on this EVP and VXLAN fabric will have access to that data. You could absolutely choose that Blueware is not touching your underlay. Let's say your underlay is already deployed and you don't want Blueware to, to, to touch it. This is completely possible to have Blueware only focus on the overlay, right? So, but here I'm talking about the underlay. So in the underlay here, um, I'm, you know, in this data model, I'm showing that, you know, for my if node uh, number one, number two, you know, I would like, you know, my slash 31s to be um, numbered that way. So Blueware has a, Blueware has an IPAM um, module. Um, this is not an IPAM uh, module that is there to replace your existing IPAM. Um, it is just there to support what traditional IPAM is not able to, to give you, such as more sophisticated reservations like VTEP, um, reservations per VTEP, um, remember when you deploy your um, um, your loopbacks, for instance, uh, perfect segue to talk about the overlay. Well, the overlay, um, you're going to have to deploy shared loopbacks in between the two leaf nodes in the same VTEP, right? So the IPAM module within Blueware can help you do that. So let me just illustrate this. For instance, you can see here, uh, this is an example of, you know, spine numbering here. Um, you know, this is, I could do reservations per, you know, um, EVPN, EVPN domain or sharing conditions per EVPN domain. Here, this is the same. This is a, a unique loopback of a pool of loopbacks. And here, uh, for instance, well, this one's not interesting, right? Those, those are, you know, basically two basic loopbacks. Let me switch to this one that probably would be a bit more interesting. So here, this is how I would like my leaf to be numbered. You know, EVPN, uh, an EVPN domain, um, you know, uh, this is a way for the engine to understand that this, this leaf will have to, you know, to connect to an interface called spine one and, you know, uh, also to spine two. And here I got my loopback for, for my leaf. And you can see here with, with, for this loopback one, I can put a sharing condition where it will be an identical and not a new loopback if um, you're part of the same VTEP. So back to the EVPN 
um, domain. So like I said earlier, I have you know two VTEPs, and this is how I specify how I would like interfaces to be numbered. And you can even see that I am specifying here that in between my VTEPs, I have back-to-back -back, uh, back -back interfaces. Something important to understand is that this model is completely configurable. We can change, maybe you not using any cask gateways, any cask, um, you know, uh, you know, gateway MAC addresses, uh, we can alter this model as, as you know, as, as, as desired. This is just an example, you know, to, sh to show you that we could go sophisticated, but, but we could simplify or enrich this model as, as, as we wish, right? So let me show you some other details that I've put in, you know, in this particular, in this particular model. This is my global routing settings for, for, the, for the fabric. And I don't have, I don't think I have any other details here, right? So. This is basically my my um, uh, my EVPN domain, and this is supporting you know uh, my underlay and my overlay, right? So now, how do I configure the VLANs that I want to deploy, and how do I configure the VRFs I would like to deploy? So the information about the VLANs and the VRF is held by the by, by the VTEP, right? And maybe I, I should show you maybe a map that will help you understand you know all the dependencies you know visually if i go if i go to my first spine node here you know i can show you the map a little bit bigger you know you can see that i am the spine and i am attached to this evpn domain and the way that this is done is that on each node you know i have a way to specify the persona of that of that um, spine and say i am part of this domain and by the way within this fabric Within this domain, I am spine number one, right? If I go on the other one here, you can see on persona wise, I am spine number two. I could specify leaf and spine uh, roles right here, but I am a spine here, okay. So if you look at this map, you can see that I am specifying, you know, the two VTEPs and here is the VTEP that I have. And the VTEP that I have is a way to declare the tenant VRFs and the you know, tenant VLANs. What is important to understand is that when I'm saying declare, this is a very, very important uh, word here because you're literally specifying here all the different VRFs that you would like to deploy or here, or the different VLANs that I'd like you know, uh, installed. And this is basically the reference model. So if you're specifying right now, I've only deployed like one VRF. If gold is the VRF that is deployed right now, then it means that all the fabric will only have the gold VRF deployed. This argument is, va is valid whether you're deploying a you know, traditional VPN VXLAN or, or CRB VXLAN. Um, in a topology, this is a declarative model, a declarative approach. It means that if someone is like, for some reason, installed another VRF and was not supposed to install it, then when Glueware provisions the fabric, it will say, sorry, the, you know, whatever other VRF should not be there, only gold is declared, only gold should be there, and it will clean up the configuration. So this is a way to make sure that, uh, and this is even more important um, in the case of the fabric, you want to make sure that all the nodes are corrected according to this data model, and you don't have nodes out of sync. And I'll show you that I'll show you how we synchronize later. Now you're going to tell me, okay, but um, how do I specify how I would like my gold VRF um, number? Um, you're deploying, you know, ORB interfaces, and you want to make sure that you know you're specifying a subnet, and that you know um, the interfaces are, are, are configured accordingly on, on on spine one and spine two. And so, how do you do this? So, if we look at the VRF gold here, I've clicked on. On, on this reference here, I have another way to, to do this. Is I could have uh, I could have you know used this 
this symbol here to, to go to go and um, inspect my, my gold VRF. You can see that here I am specifying that this VRF will be attached to VLAN 77. I'm specifying the VNI that I want here. And here I am specifying a pool, right? And I'm specifying as well if I am using, you know, a, 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 a virtual IP in between, um, you know, um, two spines. So if I'm going and inspect this pool, this is just a traditional pool where basically I have this particular subnet that's going to be cut into, you know, um, slash 24s and um, basically, you know, as soon as I need a subnet, um, then uh, Glueware will allocate, um, allocate a new one. You can make reservations, of course. But basically, this is how you're specifying um, the, 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 the IP addressing information for, for um, VRF, um, for the gold VRF. Now, just a quick uh, explanation of by my topology. So I have two MX routers as spine one and spine two. And not to overwhelm because of course I could have put like way more nodes. I, I've only put, you know, um, one, one leaf node here that will be used for the, for the demo. Um, just to make sure that, you know, uh, people understand, you know, the moving parts, because if, of course, if I'm putting like multiple VTEPs, hundreds of VLANs, etc., it's, it's very, going to be very, very difficult to understand. This leaf node here is a QFX switch. And if you, you go here, you can see that it is part of the same domain. And this is a leaf node. Um, and, and this is, this is the role of with, with, within the fabric. So let's go back to my, you know, my spino, my, my, you know, this guy here. Okay. So like I showed earlier in the domain, then you can see that I only have this gold VRF deployed on VTEP one and obviously VTEP three is empty, right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the Glueware engine, you know, what are you about to do on this box? Let's do preview, right? Preview means that the Glueware engine is not going to do anything. It's just going to say, I'm inspecting the configuration of this node and it will tell me exactly what it is about to do, not doing it, about to do. So then you can extract that CLI, you know, from, from the logs, put this in a ticket, go through your traditional approval process. This is, this is not happening, right? So let me, let me do that. So while this is doing that, and um, uh, I'm going to just click here just to show you the, the, the engine humming, right? So you have a lot of details. You can inspect a lot of what's happening, uh, how the engine is, is analyzing um, the, this, the, the, the CLI and everything. But here I'm going to show the process CLI. And you can see this is empty. There's, there's nothing here. And the reason why it's because right now on my spine one, my goal PRF is already deployed, right? So the engine says, okay, it's already there. I haven't seen anything missing, anything wrong. Um, um, so it's, it's literally saying you're, you're in compliance with what the model says. Now, um, and I can show you that config. So let me bring that config up for you. And you can see I have here, you know, 77, a whole bunch of stuff. And this is basically everything about this VRF 77 um, and associated VLAN. And you can verify that this is um, the, the actual stuff because this is, you know, 77. And literally here you can say that this is, you know, um, exactly how I would like uh, my, my, my VRF gold to be deployed. Right. And there's nothing else, but, but this one. So now you're going to tell me, uh, where is that CLI coming from? Um, so yeah, maybe I should have shown this to you a little bit earlier. Just, just bear in mind, just try to remember this little syntax here. You're going to see something very similar. I'm going to show you how this is templated, uh, within Glueware, um, you know, config modeling. So I have a, uh, I have a, a, a feature and a network feature. And it is attached to um, a construct, a pre importing Glueware that we call the assembly. And the assembly is attached to a node. The reason why we don't attach network features directly to the node is like you would like to deal with scale. So the assembly is basically where you declare all, while declaring all your 
network features that you would want to see uh, automated by Glueware. So it could be as small as one feature and then your, 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 your um, switch or router is operating completely different other features and you don't want Glueware to touch those features, right? You could start as little as saying to Glueware, just automate my SNMP configuration and that's all. And the rest, firewalling, routing, uh, your other globals, you don't want Glueware to touch, to touch them. This is, uh, this is completely possible to do that. In this particular, um, particular example here, I have one, um, one feature, just one feature. It's just, I've, I've called it you know, spine, spine routing. This is the, the, the feature that, that I have. And um, here, this is where I have, I have the, CLI, um, the CLI templated, right? And um, here I've got my policy options. Here I've got my routing instances. Uh, you know my, my my BGP configuration for my for my overlay, and you, you go, and you're going to notice this is only the configuration for for the additional configuration required for the the, the, the VRFs that you're um, that you're um, uh, deploying, and there's a little bit of the overlay configuration as well. Now, um, the what is important to 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 note is is that all those different snippets of uh, of CLI. They're all, uh, you know, attached to a group, and and the group is pretty important because a, a group a, a group is literally a way to control the boundaries of um, um, of the Glueware engine when working on the configuration. So, for instance, uh, you could specify that some some commands should not be touched, should not be removed, right? Or maybe there's a particular way to remove something, or maybe. You know, you want conditional rendering based on the SKU, based on the feature, uh, based on the version that you're running of 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 of, of Junos, um, and um, so this is what what groups are for, right? So just wanted to show you where the uh, where the snippets uh, the snippets are, and um, you're gonna notice that every time that you want to call um, something related. You know, a, a, um, a piece of information related to the fabric, you're basically going to use, you know, um, um, you know, dollar context VPN, right? So um, this is not the right, uh, the, the, the right, um, you know, session to explain to you, you know, rendering. We can do, ex you know, extremely complex rendering uh, with optional keywords, mandatory keywords. Uh, Glueware can do all that, but I'm not going to explain that here. Just understand that here this is all the details of the fabric related to the node you're configuring in my case here this is spine one will be fed to you through this object here that you can invoke and call and have the data related to spine one so it means details about the leaf nodes that are attached to that spine one about um you know the the vrfs and the and, and, and the VLANs that are uh, you know attached to this spine one, uh, etc. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to deploy an additional you know uh, VRF, right? So I have another one. Let me go to my VTAP here. I got another one. After a goal, I have um, silver uh, or bronze. Let's choose silver. And you can see my model is now you know. Um, you know, showing the silver VRF. And let me show you my silver VRF. You can see it's using the same pool that I've shown you earlier. Gold was 77, this one will be 99, just to make it easier to, to watch when we're gonna look at the node um, uh, configuration. And this is it, and this is my VLAN, my VLAN details where basically I only have the VLAN ID and, and, and the name that I want for it, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to, um, you know, launch the preview the provisioning preview that I've shown earlier on this particular spine, we'll, 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 we'll explain the fabric, um, the fabric um, and the synchronization of the fabric later. I just want to show you just one, one node in details uh, before I show you the, 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 the more global thing. So what Gluer is doing right now, it's analyzing the configuration of the box that remember, it's got the gold, you know, the, the gold VRF. And you can see that the engine says, okay, obviously all that, you know, all these lines here, this is what I'm going, I'm going to do in order um, to deploy this additional, you know, 
uh, silver VRF. And you can see there's nothing about gold, right? It just realized, okay, this is what's missing here. And so when I want to make that happen, right? I'm going to say, okay, I'm was comfortable with my preview. I can say provision, make it happen now, and I'm deploying. So if I go back to the logs now, and you don't have to go through the logs. The logs are just here because I want to show you that this is happening. And it should be pretty quick. Um, so what the engine is going right now is like this is deploying this additional, you know, uh, silver VRF with the, the IRB configuration, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then um, it's going to commit this. And you can see here I got my commit complete, so it's almost there, right? I'm going to check what's been done. Okay, this is what's been done. If I if I go back now to um, um, to my uh, terminal window, let me put it there. Up. Okay, so we only have the 77 stuff here. Um, I'm going to do this. You can see that now I have my, you know, gold and silver, you know, um, VRF and, and VLANs appearing here. And you can, uh, you can see, let me show you this here as well. You can see that also my RRB interface, you know, has been, um, has been deployed as well, right? So I have my routing information, okay? So um, what I'm going to show you now is that, you know, I, I want to show you the declarative approach of, of, of that model. I could say, oh, no, I don't want silver anymore. Okay. So I've removed silver. I'm saving. And if I am going back, you know, to the provisioning, um, you know, menu here, and I'm saying provision, what we're going to see is that Blueware, and I went straight to provision, right? You guys know uh, about, about the preview. I just wanted to show you, you know, uh, what the engine is about to do. So what the engine is about to do now is that it's going to literally remove the silver one, right? So let's uh, wait for this to finish. And then done and then you can see that Blueware automatically understood what was necessary from a CLI standpoint to remove this silver VRF and all the other details of that VRF. And I've shown you earlier, you know, the CLI, the CLI is only showing how to add stuff, but because Blueware has an understanding of all the grammar and semantic, you know, rules that um, runs on uh, Junos, and it's doing this for any operating system that we support. It understands what it takes to add, what it takes to shift, add, move, and most importantly, delete. And this is exactly what 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 uh, what we requested here is that no 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 just use gold, just I just want gold deploy. Um, I don't, I don't want the silver view. Go back here, you know, on this, on, on, um, if we go back here, you're going to see, um, that all the details about, you know, the silver VRF and VLAN, um, it's gone, right? And you can see even, uh, even the RRB interface is gone, right? It was just under, it's gone. So this is just to show you the declarative approach of this data model. Okay. Now let, let's put it back. Let's let's put the silver the silver uh, one here. Okay, this is the silver one. So now you're going to tell me, okay, but I've got multiple spine nodes. I have multiple leaf nodes. You know how do I make sure that when I'm requesting this silver, um, you know, VRF to be added to my fabric, you know. How do I make sure that this is spread across all the nodes where the silver VRF, you know, matters? Well, you know, remember this here, this is the domain I've shown you earlier, right? This, you know, this, this node here is pointing to the VTEP domain, right? Well, this is as simple as right clicking on it and say sync. 
And so literally here, let me just get this a little bit bigger. So basically what, what Glowar is going to do now is going to launch the provisioning of all the nodes that are part of this fabric. It's going to inspect according to the data model what are all the nodes that are part of um, of, of this uh, of, of this you know fabric? I can um, I can you know quickly connect on on, on this one here, which is um, you know show uh, before it's doing it. You can see that on spine two, there's only seventy seven. There's only gold here, right? And um, here, see, it's starting to work on 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 um, on, on uh, the second one. I can even show you that if I go on spine two, here you can see that if I'm looking at the logs, it's literally working on it right now. If I go back to this when it's done, let's wait a little bit. It's still like still humming. It's going to switch to the leaf here switching to the leaf you can see that if i redo this here all the related silver details have appeared you know including the interface the irb interface 99 that is not you know um that is not number dot two dot two you know belongs to spine one this is spine two and of course, this is why it is, it is you know, uh, the Glueware engine has, um, you know, configured this box with, um, with, with, with this, with this um, you know, subnet, um, precisely this subnet. So this is done. And if we go to the QFX node here, where's my leaf node? Here it is, right? I can even see the log. You know, it, it just, did, it just did, that, did that. I can see what did you do on this node? And you can say, you can see that it deployed, you know, this particular details, this particular CLI for the uh, silver, you know, VRF. And you can see no layer three details here, right? We're talking about a CRB design here. So there's only the layer two details. So this is how you synchronize. Um, you make sure that all the nodes involved uh, involved in um, in the fabric uh, have the details um, you know uh, syn synchronized um, accordingly. So now let me illustrate what this customer did uh, using Glueware. Um, the challenge is de was deploying hundreds of VLANs on a um, you know QFX based CRB deployment. Uh, so the customers got 10Ks and you know 51, 5200s you know F leaf nodes. And um, the idea is to integrate, you know, Glueware, um, you know, in their CI/CD pipeline, and, and use Glueware, uh, you know, headless. So relying on API calls to fill Glueware with all the details related to the to the to the VLANs. So all the details in regards to the VLANs from, you know, the ASN, um, you know, numbers, the IP, the VLAN numbers, uh, IP pools, all that were coming from, um, you know, from their existing infrastructure and making API calls, um, it was feeding Glueware with all those details. So, um, and I'm going to, to illustrate this to you and, and, and show you how we created a specific data model to include all these details uh, in order to, to provision, you know, those, those hundreds of VLANs. There was one constraint, um, you know, that was added, you know, by, by this customer is that um, the customer wanted only um, Glueware to touch the provisioning of of, 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 the, v, of the VLANs, the VRF, and, 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 and you know, and all that. The customer was not interested in the underlay to be touched, the overlay to be touched, um, um, and and the switch ports were handled, you know, um, differently in, in the process, and so. In addition to that, um, the customer also wanted Glueware to only provision the new VLANs, the new VRFs, the new you know the, the new stuff only. The fabric, um, you know, the EVPN fabric already had like you know at least you know hundreds of VLANs configured, and and um, you know there was a challenge for the declarative approach, right? Because you know, Glueware, uh, as I explained earlier, Glueware is, is going to only deploy what's specified in the model. 
So this is this is um, absolutely possible, you know, to control, you know, the the the, the, the boundaries of the glueware engine. So in, in this particular use case, the customer was able to specify, um, you know, that only specific, you know, um, VLANs would basically be handled by glueware. And even if glueware is going to analyze the config and see all the other older existing VLANs, then glueware wouldn't touch it. Sorry, touch them. So now let me show you the, 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 mo the model that was built, you know, specifically for this use case. Um, you know, you can see here that, you know, all the CLI related to provisioning, um, you know, provisioning those um, VLANs, URF, you know, they're all, they're all here according to the customer's, um, you know, specifications, you know, forwarding options here, um, you know, interfaces, um, et cetera, et cetera. Let me show you, um, you know, policy options, you know, the VLANs, uh, the set VLAN commands, and the, uh, you know, protocols EVPN um, uh, commands. And so what the customer is literally doing, and this is, you know, it's very similar to, you know, what I've illustrated with, you know, the other model with a generic, you know, EVPN, EVPN, um, you know, VXLAN fabric, is that you know this is two examples where you have those those um, those VLANs. This is a layer two VLAN, and this is like a more sophisticated VLAN. So the customer wanted like specific um, specific types of VLANs, and those all the data that you see here were fed to Blueware through API calls, right? So this is not something entered um, by by the customer manually. This is fed, you know, by um, by their um, you know um, uh, you know API calls to Blueware. And because the, all these data is coming like from multiple systems, um, then you know that customer is also using Glueware as a source of truth. But all these details been has been uh, chased up and added here. It's using Glueware as a source of truth, and um, exactly the same way that I've um, you know shown you the, how it was activated, you know uh, on each on each VTAP. Well, you know the customer here wanted this to be activated at the network feature level. So here. This is a way that the customer is just like you know adding you know adding more uh, or removing VLANs and will um, you know provision uh, accordingly. All right, thank you Olivier for that very detailed demonstration and also the customer use case, and it's a great example on how you know kind of a brownfield already deployed environment they wanted to bring automation in and how Glueware is still a great fit for them. And uh, if you'd like to learn more about that customer, they're actually speaking on our behalf at an upcoming event. So depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching it here at the end of September, coming up very soon here, October 14th, the first day of the Onug Fall 2020 event, Glueware has an afternoon keynote with our customer co-presenting with us and is gonna talk a lot more about that use case. So check out onug.net or their, their specific uh, event URL. The URL here is fall.onug.net register for the event and attend it'll be a lot of great content and don't don't miss that customer keynote if you're watching it after that event those videos will be on demand on their website so if you'd like to learn more about glueware or even get your hands on it and we uh, let's say kick the tires and play around we offer something called a test drive where we spin up a virtual environment for you and you walk through some tutorial videos and you get to follow along so if you're a hands-on person, check out glueware.com slash test dash drive, request that. The test drive does not currently have eVPN in it, but certainly you could get a feel for the Glueware experience and the applications uh, in addition to config modeling that we offer for network automation. Finally, if you're very interested in eVPN or, or want to contact us more specifically about what you saw in this webinar, please email us at sales at glueware.com and we would love to you know, have a conversation, understand your challenges and see if our automation solutions specifically for EVPN VXLAN or really any other network scenario, if we can help out, we would love to. So we look forward to speaking with you and have a great rest of your day. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Thanks very much.